Welcome to our lecture online and let's take a look at some unique combination of hybridization of orbitals and pi bonding and in this particular case we're going to look at the benzene molecule C6H6 and it's a circular molecule uh, where all the carbons are connected to each other kind of like in a circular orbit and with each carbon having a bond with a single hydrogen so think of it as being in a plane where all the carbons are lined up, six of them, and at the end of each carbon, there's a connection to a single hydrogen like that. And in addition to that, there's still a, what we call a P orbital sticking up perpendicular to the plane of where the molecule resides. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Since carbon is the molecule that basically forms the back, uh, is the atom that basically forms the backbone of this molecule, let's take a look at carbon. Carbon has two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and two electrons in the 2p orbitals. But in order for it to make these bonds between the carbons and the hydrogen, and yes indeed, there will be about a 120 degree bond angle between all these, 120 degrees, then because of that, the current structure of the s orbitals and p orbitals can't accomplish that. So they hybridize, they change into a different orbital, a hybrid orbital and we call those the sp2 orbital so we have a trigonal planar arrangement for each carbon with three orbitals sticking out at 120 degree angles making it possible to make those bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens so that was, that's what would happen in this case right there so if you just take a look at a single carbon like that notice that it makes it has three orbitals three hybridized orbitals sp2 orbitals as we call them one that has a, a hydrogen connected to it and then the other one that have carbons connected to. So that's what that typically looks like for a single uh, carbon atom. But then the last orbital, the P in the Z direction, is not hybridized. So it stays there and it then forms two lobes, one sticking up and one sticking down, just as I try to illustrate here around each carbon has a set of lobes. These are the PZ orbitals and they all contain a single electron. So, since they only contain a single electron, they can make bonds, and typically what they would do is they would form a pi bond by bending over like this and connecting and allowing one above the plane and one below the plane. So the typical thing that you would expect to see is that you end up with a pi bond looking like this, and since those two p orbitals are taken by those two carbons, you have another one and another one, and you would end up in something like this. So this was the typical arrangement from the Lewis structure that we were expecting, but since there's no real difference between this arrangement and this arrangement, knowing that the, that the double bonds are here, here, and here on the right side, and are there, there, and there on the left side, and we can go back and forth like that, we kind of assumed that it was like a, kind of like a 50-50 arrangement where 50% of the time the bonds would look like this and 50% of the time the bonds would look like that. So that the pi bonds, as we would call them, pi bonds, would alternately switch between the carbons. But that's not really what's happening. What really is happening is that there's what we call a delocalization of the pi bonds, which means that the pi bonds will begin to reach out and instead of going from one carbon to the next carbon they basically reach out and go over two or three or four carbons they, they reach out so each of these these uh, p orbitals will stretch out and, and form a layer above the carbons where the three free electrons because you know there's uh, there would be a free electron here, a free electron there and there that would be three that will remain above the plane and then the other three that would remain below the plane so instead of forming these little bridges, in essence, what will be formed is a continual ring above the carbons in which three electrons can reside, and then another ring below, of course that's kind of hard to draw, but I'll draw it like this, and another ring below the carbons, again, where the other three electrons can reside, so end up with, th with two ring-shaped regions that physically make a unified pi bond above the benzene ring and below the benzene ring. And the three electrons will then reside in the above ring and three electrons will reside in the below ring. So the six electrons, three electrons from the six carbons, will then occupy that what we call delocalized pi bond. And so that's what we call them. We call these, and let me write that down for you, 
delocalized pi bonds, and that would be above and below the benzene rings. Now, another way of then indicating what that molecule looks like is we would draw a hexagon like this. Say one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have the hexagon that would then represent the six carbons, and then we draw a ring inside the hexagon, which then indicate the delocalized pi bonds that then form the double bond on a, how would you call it, every other bond between the carbons on average. So basically what you would think about it is that on average you'd have one and a half bonds between each of the carbon. We have a sigma bond that is there caused by the hybridized orbital and then we have the ring, ring-like structure which basically forms an average of a half a bond between each of the carbons which would be a half a pi bond. So on average you have about one and a half bonds between the carbons by the delocalization of the pi bonding. And that's a very interesting condition that exists by the hybridization, partial hybridization, and partial p-orbitals, which then form the pi bonds between the carbons.